Hi everybody, Dugras here with Dugras Reports. Welcome to another episode of Frugal Points. So today, I'm going to tell you what's on my mind, and that is a video that was recently put out by one of my fellow YouTubers, Chad from Chad's Money Minute. And the title of the video was something like, I don't remember the exact words, some reasons why you suck at credit. In one of the points, he talked about how to use credit card debt. Now, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but what I took away from it was there is probably going to come a time at some point in your life when you're going to have to carry a balance. Do you have a car loan? Well, you're willing to carry a balance on that. Why would you be philosophically opposed to carrying a balance on a credit card? And of course he means for more than just the monthly statement and grace period. He has a point because I do have a mortgage and I do have a car loan. I have had various other loans at various points in life. So why is there an unwillingness to carry a balance on a credit card? Well, of course, the reason that the normal people think about, let's call them normies, is that you'll get into high credit card debt, paying 15, 20, 25%, 32% interest, and that's just ridiculous and unmanageable. I mean, even a car loan won't be more than 7 or 8%. Also, a car loan is an asset you can use a car. Well, what if you used your credit card to buy a car and carry the balance? So, nothing he said was wrong, but I still have some reactions to that. Uh, one reaction is, that feels like playing with fire. For most normies out there, I'd say 90 to 95 percent of the general population, I would not recommend carrying a balance on a credit card, even if you think it makes financial sense. And the logic there is, honestly, I just don't think most people have enough self-discipline to do that and to pay it off, to make sure they have enough income in the future to pay it off, make good, strong payments even if it's zero percent, cover the whole balance of the future. But let's face it, if you're watching this video, odds are you're not one of the 90 percent. You're in the 10 percent. You're not a normie. So if you play the credit card game, hopefully, in theory, you already have enough discipline to manipulate credit cards, to stretch them to their max, to read the fine print and get every possible advantage out of them. Or as Chad likes to say, you have the ability to not leave money on the table because we hate leaving money on the table. Give me that. So maybe it is okay for those of us in the points of miles game. I'm not exactly sure what my fleshed out philosophy on this is, but let's just let's just think it through here. So I have at least three credit cards right now. Uh, let me take that back. I have four credit cards right now that have a 0% interest rate because I opened them less than a year ago and they came with an introductory offer that for the first 11, 12, 13 months, 0% on all purchases. Uh, three out of the four are business credit cards. They don't even report to my personal credit. I am currently carrying a balance on uh, two of those because of paying tuition for my kids. My kids go to a private school. I think that's a worthwhile investment and our cash flow is such that we have to pay it all up front per semester and then we can pay it off gradually. So there's a couple factors. One is uh, my wife's a teacher. She gets paid during the summer even though she's not teaching. Secondly, she's going to be getting a raise starting in August. That's a for sure thing. She already has the contract. A fairly substantial raise. In my case, I think I'm going to be getting a raise somewhere around September of next year. So 
I feel like in the future I can cover that. I'm I'm fairly confident. I've discussed with my boss. There's some things going on. It's it's pretty likely. I put the likelihood at 90 to 95 percent that I'll be getting a somewhat substantial raise, probably about third quarter of this year. And even if I don't, we're trying to pinch every penny. We're trying to pay that down pretty promptly. And I'm sorry we're staring directly into the sun here, folks. It makes more financial sense for me to carry that balance on a 0% interest credit card than on even a good personal loan. Let's say I got it before rates went up and I was paying 3 or 4%. Why not pay 0% instead of getting a personal loan for that? You know, another example could be buying a car. Another example could be investing in your business. So I'm not going to go around recommending it to people. Uh, but you know, I will say this, he has a point. Now let me take that one step further and tell you about an idea that I have. And I think people do this, but I think the people that do this rarely talk about it. And that is playing some sort of float game with your credit cards. I'll use an example from my life. I haven't done this, but I'm just thinking about it. So. I've mentioned before my parents live in assisted living and their month was their rent was over four thousand dollars a month now with inflation it's over five thousand dollars a month so every single month I can pay their rent on a credit card get five thousand dollars of spend and then they just write a check to reimburse me and they're totally okay with that in exchange I help them take care of their finances no problem this works out good family relationship we all trust each other in that regard uh, but that does give me kind of a unique opportunity where I have $5,000 of spend I can flow through cards every month. Last month, I put the charge on my relatively new American Express Business Platinum card. That helped me meet the uh, minimum spend requirement and I got the bonus of 150,000 Amex points. Um, I also opened a Amex Business checking account along with it where you had to keep a certain balance for a certain period of time. So when I paid the rent, my parents wrote me a check, I just put that check into the Amex business checking account and I'll pay it a few days before it's due. Um, now the way it timed out is I got the reimbursement a good three weeks before I needed to pay the bill. So it's sitting in that Amex business checking account earning interest before I pay off Amex. So it's almost like Amex is giving me a very short term uh, interest free loan. Actually beyond that, they're paying me interest. Now in that particular account, it's not very much. It's only, I think 1.3%. So uh, it's probably gonna be $10 or something like that. But what if I took that to another extreme? Let's just say hypothetically I were to do that next month and put the charge on my American Express Blue Business Plus card, which is one of the cards that gave me a 0% offer. Instead of paying it off right away, I think I have until December of this year, I could take the $5,000 reimbursement from my parents, not pay off Amex for that 0% interest card, and I've got May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, roughly eight months that I can collect interest. And it doesn't obviously have to be, excuse me, obviously it doesn't have to be an Amex account. I could open a six month CD. I could put it in a short term treasury bill. I could just find a savings account. There's plenty of savings accounts paying 4% right now, you know, and make some money. Now obviously I'm going to hit credit limits. That's only got a $15,000 credit limit. But what if I did it with say all three of the business cards that I have that sort of arrangement on? I could be basically meeting spend, getting points, not paying it off. I mean I'd still make the minimum payments, but not paying off the balance. I'm being charged 0%. Some other bank is paying me 4%. Now again, I will admit, this takes a lot of discipline. I'm not gonna re recommend it to most people because it does feel like playing with fire. But I will ask the opinion of you, the viewer, what would you do if you were in that situation? 
And do you have any examples where you have the kind of cash flow where you can do that? Either you're getting reimbursed or, you know, somehow you have some sort of fungible money that you can put a charge on a credit card and that means you have more cash flow to put into savings accounts. I suppose if you want to go really risky, you could put it in the stock market, but then you have a risk of losses. So that's just something I'm thinking about. Thank you for triggering my brain to think through that, Chad. I appreciate it. I, I like your braveness in bringing up the topic. Not sure I would have been brave enough <laughs> to bring up the topic. And uh, I guess for me, if it's 0%, I will consider it anything other than 0%. Right now, I'm not, not going to do it, but I'll, I'll let you know if I change my mind. Another avenue is you could follow RJ's advice and uh, use that cash flow to open some sweet bank account bonuses. Well, that's all I have for today. If you find any value in this discussion, please subscribe to the channel. And as always, may your spending be frugal and may your points be plenteous. Thanks so much for watching.